In this episode of the CFO Project Podcast, we answer your questions around using automation to get your time back so you can get paid more. Welcome to the CFO Project Podcast. Today, we're talking all about using automation to get your time back so you can get paid more. To help me with the discussion, I've invited Jesse Rubenfeld and Tom Zahetner of Finn Optimal on. Jesse and Tom, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us, Adam. Excited to be here. So, I, so I know that you guys have founded and managed Finn Optimal, which you know I'm, you'll tell us about in just a second, but why are you an expert on automation and why did you start Fin Optimal? I guess I'll take this one, Tom. Um, <laughs> I mean, you, you started it, so yes. I did, I did <laughs> um, I really did it to help my own, to help me make my own day jobs better, right? It grew out of, wow, I think I, I really have a strength for automating my accounting job, my controllership. Um, you know, I think I'm good enough at it that some people at other firms might want to do it. It worked at LimeWire. It worked well at D.E. Shaw. Let's see if other small and medium businesses that are on QuickBooks Online can benefit from some of the technology and process improvements that I've made for myself. Wow. And that's really the founding spirit behind Finoptimal. Okay. That's awesome. Well, I know we have some good questions for us to get to, so let's get to the questions. Rochelle wants to know, I've tried automating my clients' books before. I've even tried to outsource my clients' bookkeeping to a third-party company. But because I'm a control freak, I end up reviewing everything, which takes up time, which defeats the whole point of automation or outsourcing in the first place. How can I be sure that what's happening behind the scenes is accurate and I can put my trust in it? This is a really good question that Rochelle asked. Because I, I get this personally all the time from people because you know, there's a ton of companies that want to outsource or you know, like you guys want to help automate systems but a lot of accountants are they're, they're they want to they want to know everything so what are your guys thoughts i'll take it first i'm going to pick out the word control from control freak in that question mm. and put on an internal control hat right like I, I started my career in audit and did a lot of work around internal controls what you really want to have are system controls meaning like are, are these systems integrating mm. correctly and you want to have detective controls to review the output of those systems. If all of your controls are preventative and manual in nature, one, those are riskier controls because you're doing a manual review of all kinds of things. And two, you're not really spending your time in a wise way, right? So you can build in ways to review and analyze outputs rather than, you know, nitpicking or micromanaging the day-to-day -day processes around data entry and moving things between systems. I'll also comment like it's really important to understand what you're automating. All automation is not created in the same way. Mm -hmm. And if you pick a process that isn't really conducive to automation, it's going to have more errors and it might create more work than it's even saving you in the first place. So selection is very important, but then just also understanding the inputs and outputs and where you should be involved is really important to kind of letting that control freak in, in you not die down, but kind of shift to a different part of the process. So it's like picking the right things to automate. And then the things that you do pick to automate, really understanding how it's being automated so you can sort of feel better about it. Is, is there a way to, I guess, what's your guys' philosophy on checking to make sure the automation is doing what it's supposed to do without having to like recreate go through everything. I'm going to cut in here and say, you know, it's that you never want to put yourself in a situation where you're counting on software to get it right every time. From my standpoint, and we, we do clients books, mm -hmm. so we understand that control freakness very much. That is your job. It's your job to make sure the account that the automation is working correctly and there's better software and worse software and better ways to set it up and worse ways to set it up. Um, you want to work, you want to work on the processes that are most conducive and you want to work with the software that gives you the best results with the least amount of effort 
But I think the key with using automation is you're removing the data entry. You're removing the data entry task, which is error prone. Talk about control freaks, right? Like that's often where the problems get introduced when you have a person doing something that's conducive to automation, Mm. right? If you just have to review it and it's usually right, that's a huge win, even if you still have to review it closely because you didn't have to do the data entry. Yeah, that's a good point. I have also noticed in a lot of bookkeepers and accountants that they'll obsess over things they probably shouldn't obsess over. Like if automation says that this transaction went into to office supplies where it really should be in something else, who cares? Like at the end of the day, that's, I mean, it, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Um, Adam, the CFO (laughs) in me agrees with you and the controller in me, you know, empathizes with whoever it is that says like, no, why is it right? Like (laughs) we, we try to build our products to address the nuance without losing, you know, address the trees without losing sight of the forest, so to speak. Totally. Yeah. And I was referring to something that's insignificant, like, like a $50 expense. I mean, if it was something larger than that, you know, but but yeah, I, I agree with you. I, agree. I mean, I yeah, think I, people I, even are um, when they when they look at automation, they'll be like, well, this can do 99 percent of what I'm doing right now. But I really need this extra column in my spreadsheet and the software's automated schedule doesn't have that column. So I'm just going to do it manually for the rest of my life. And it's mm, why yeah. like, accountants don't stop and ask, why am I doing this? They just do and do and do and do until they explode, right? Like yeah. I think that's the accountant's trap, right? Of just doing the same thing over and over and over again and not stopping to totally. pause, reflect, and make decisions to make your life easier. Yeah. I mean, we all have to realize that, you know, accounting and bookkeeping firm owners that are listening, you're running a business. Your job is to make money from your business. And so you think of your business as a machine. And you want to make sure your machine's running enough so that it's making more and more money. You are, you are a, if you are the machine, if you're the, yeah. the roadblock, if you're the, the, the kink in that machine, you are the one that's holding your business back from growing. And, and at the end of the day, if, to your point, Tom, if you're 99% accurate, that's better. So it, it, it's better. So you can get yeah. more clients, make more revenue than being 100% accurate and then just doing everything yourself. Yeah. Focus on the result. What is the totally. goal? Are you going to still accomplish that goal with the automation? Then th- that should be what, that should be the goal, right? The yeah. goal is to accomplish your goal for lack of a better phrase. <laughs> That's right. Love it. Everybody listening, if you haven't already, sign up for a five-minute weekly email with practical tips for accountants and bookkeepers to escape the accountant's trap. Go to the cfoproject.com forward slash newsletter. All right, what's our next question? Mark wants to know, I love systems and processes. What apps or software is a must-have for my accounting practice? It's a good question. I almost feel like this is a softball (laughs) question for you guys. But I I mean, I think a lot of people are curious on apps and software that you guys would recommend. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 we are biased because we believe strongly in automating the actual accounting work. What I mean by that is, Eliminate data entry, eliminate sure. manual journal entries, right? Eliminate manual reconciliations and reporting tasks, right? Simplify those processes. And I think a lot of accountants gravitate more towards organization oh. of tasks and practice management software. I think those types of tools are kind of easier to understand and they're more familiar. Every accountant's had a tracker and a checklist. And if you make it a slightly souped up version of that, Oh, I know this, right? So I, yeah, it makes me feel better and I can see a green progress bar and I get to have my control freak still and still do it all manually. Totally. My argument would be, what if instead of organizing your tasks, they were done for you, right? And that's where we come in and we think we're really kind of trying to fight that fight and convince accountants, give up more control to the system, right? So like we, in our apps, eliminate manual journal entries, eliminate manual entries around accrual accounting, manual reporting, and tons of other tasks. And there's some other people in the space doing the same thing. Like I think Bookkeep is a good example. You know, they build revenue recognition and tax-related solutions to eliminate the actual accounting work around that and get you on an accrual basis without just having, you know, a task to download, a task to review, a task to prepare. So in, in our mind, 
If you don't have something in your practice right now that's eliminating manual journal entries from the day-to-day -day work, you are sorely missing out on a huge opportunity to get more out of your team and reposition them on more value-add activities. Stop thinking about task management. Start thinking about task elimination. Yeah. I love how you said, you know, to stop thinking about task management. Because I agree, a lot of people feel like they're being more productive if they can organize their tasks. Well, eliminate that altogether or greatly reduce it and just have the task automatically be be automated in the background. I mean, it totally makes sense. It's like that. It's like if you're a car manufacturer, I mean, you're building a car by hand or getting a machine to automate the process to build 95% of the car. And you, you're still going to have tasks. Like we're not here trying to lie like and say, you know, not naming any names. We're not some make-believe AI company that's saying they're going to change everything overnight and you're going right. to be out of a job. You're still needed. Just totally. you do the thinking and the relationship ownership and let the computer do the stuff that you don't need to do, right? Like yep. we're not talking about all tasks being gone. We're talking about tasks that are 100% conducive to automation being replaced. Totally. That way the accountant, or the bookkeeper can get back to doing what the clients want from their accountant and bookkeeper, understanding the numbers and giving them advice to have a better business instead of their accountant and bookkeeper just getting paid to just record transactions or to, to do compliance work. A hundred percent. Because clients don't really care about that. They, they don't, they don't want to pay you by the hour or you want to fix fix fee to, to do things that they don't even understand in the first place. A hundred percent. They, if you're spending 80% of your time on something that the client values 20% of in the right. relationship, it's completely backwards. Totally. Yeah. I, I completely agree with you. Um, that makes sense. In the, in the words of, of, the, of the anchor man, um, eighty percent of the time it works. Twenty percent of the time, no, it's eighty yeah. percent of the time it works every time. That's the anchorman That's quote. Eighty percent of the time it works every time. Every time. Okay. That's yeah. funny. That is yeah. funny. Uh, since we're on, before we go to the next question, since we're on the topic of fin optimal, what is the number one surprise that people when they when they subscribe to your software? What is the number one su surprise that they really like about the software that does for them? I'm going to answer this in a little bit of like a, a, a meadow, a broad way that it works and it works immediately. That I think is shocking because there are so many apps out there that they sell you on this dream and the imp there's an implementation and there's constant recurring meetings and it's just, it takes Boom. so long and such an investment of time to barely recoup anything for us. It's, I, I saw a demo or watched the video. I literally followed a three minute video and I don't have to do prepaid expenses manually ever again. I can't believe someone sent me an email the other day. I clicked the button and I cried and I cried again. Thank you. My <laughs> life has changed forever. And I remember that because it is like that reaction is so amazing, but we're Especially fighting coming from accountants. Battle. From accountants. Yeah. Um, and those were tears of joy, just That's to be awesome. clear. Uh, yeah. But I think it's just the fact that it works is shocking to people. And that's that's a really almost like a sad thing to think about that accountants are just so bar. skeptical. Right. The bar is so low because there's been so much vaporware in the space. Mm, These unbelievable promises with no delivery. And again, we're fighting an uphill battle, but um, you know, the boulder is rolling up the hill. Um, sometimes totally. we feel like Sisyphus, but you know, you gotta it, do it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, and again, I want to reiterate that if anybody listening, if you have employees, you're paying them by the hour, essentially. I mean, they have an effective hourly rate that you're paying them. You want to get as much productivity out of that hour as possible. And if you're, and they're doing, if you have them doing manual things, things that could be automated, your, your return on that invested hour that you spent on payroll is just very poor. Very cool. Yeah, look, I think uh, when people think about where should I start, I think it's usually a good indicator is where am I spending the most time not reviewing, right? Uh, we started with the question, how can I avoid spending a ton of time reviewing? You can spend less time reviewing once you gain confidence that your software is working as expected. Um, but when I decide where do I invest the time to automate first, where am I spending the most time not reviewing, which is to say entering data? Mm. That's usually a great place to start. Cause it, like you said, it's about hours. 
right? In a professional service environment, your time is your money, your efficiency is your scale, and let's get the low-hanging fruit first. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. All right, what's our next question? Joseph wants to know, I'd love to automate my practice so I can focus on advisory services, but I don't know where to start. What's your advice for me? Yeah, because that's a good question because there's a ton of ways you can start to automate. I mean, tons of things out there, but what do you guys feel? I mean, the bundle of products that we're selling is so perfect to just do this. Like we had somebody sign up last month and she's she's a a one woman shop um, and she just like onboarded 25 clients in a month. And it's just like, I am, I could triple right now and I'm not even thinking about it. What else can you give me? What else can you provide? To me, it's eliminating manual journal entries, eliminating manual tasks. Like the solutions that we have, you know, it's, do you have any prepaids, deferred revenue, fixed assets? Okay, take those schedules, throw them out. You don't need them anymore. Write in plain English in QuickBooks what you want to happen and it'll happen. Take every other schedule that you have We'll sync it to QuickBooks automatically. You're managing your journal entries in a spreadsheet. Preparing financial reports for your clients at the end of the month, we can pull that data and deliver it to a Google Sheet automatically every day whenever you click a run button. And guess what? You can tie those into your schedules and automate recs in one place. Take all of those tasks and offload them and focus on the review, the analysis, and the relationship. You know, I know that's a shameless plug, but I really do feel like there is no better way to free yourself up of time than to take the actual tasks that eat away at your day to day off of your plate. Like a practice management tool for a smaller firm specifically isn't going to help you that much. I get at scale if you're a big firm, you have all these different accounts, all the there's capacity planning that absolutely makes sense. Um, but I think starting with the manual tasks. And I think knowing how to kind of diagnose what you have going on and figure out where to start, even, you know, even with a more narrow scope is what is manual, what is repetitive, what is structured, right? And what has clear business rules, right? So structure would be like the data is in the same format every time, right? For example, bills coming in from outsiders are less structured than invoices going out from your business. You control the letterhead. You control where the numbers are on the invoice. You don't control what the Google or the Microsoft bill looks like. That's structure. And then business rules. If I see this, I do that. Is there judgment? If there's no judgment at all, that is a home run for you if it fits those criteria of of where to start. So going both super tactically and really just high level, that's how you should approach it. Jesse, what do you think? Look, I think it's a mindset. If that question's coming from someone who's inclined towards advisory, and it sounds like it is, my experience is that people who are focused on the advisory piece of their business, which is definitely higher paid, commands a higher hourly rate if the client values it, they also tend to be people who are process oriented enough to bring what you might call a nuclear spreadsheet to the table already. Meaning they've already exhausted their own optimization and they, they've done a good job. A lot of times they've come up with very cool tra- data transformers and pivot tables and you know import range, you name it. It's just that like, that's not really where they wanna spend their time. And that is where we spend our time. Yeah. So it's like they've brought it a long way. Like where they've already done a lot of their work is often where to start. I've got this model where we do invoicing. It's really, really good. Let me show you. Great. It probably is really, really good. And you start using the right software. You probably take that to the next level times two. Yeah. I I wanted, Jesse, you you kind of triggered a, a thought for me there too on like the advisory piece, right? Like, One of the reasons that I recommend starting with manual journal entries, eliminate them and get them booked systematically, even before I'm talking about automated reporting, is if the data is up to date in the system every day, right, with whatever the latest and greatest information is, that makes your job easier to analyze and make recommendations. If you have to wait till the 15th of the following month because everything else isn't done, you're always one step behind and you stop being proactive and start being 
reactive, right? Like to me, the way I've kind of heard about it is like, a, you know, a bookkeeper is, you know, this is what happened. A controller is this is why it happened, right? And a, a CFO or advisory is here's what's going to happen moving forward. Yeah. If the first two boxes aren't checked, it makes your job a lot easier. You need data updated. That's the number one thing in my mind to make you successful providing advisory. Totally. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, this question that Joseph asked was, it, I, I hear from the variation of this question from a lot of people because they've been doing tax or, or bookkeeping, or whatever, for say 20 years and they've been doing, they're comfortable in their lane. They, it makes them comfortable doing the same thing. And they, but they know they need to, to, to make more money. They essentially know they need to pivot. Well, you can make more money in two ways, either increase your fees <coughs> or reduce your cost. <laughs> right. Well, you, you know, you can't increase your fee. Like in Joseph's situation, he wants to transition from accounting to advisory. He can't do that until he can replace his accounting. And the way to do that is through automating. I mean, it, it makes sense so that he can then free up his time to focus on services that he can increase his fees on. Correct. It's, and it's I like think a chicken and eggs. And it's, it's, it's absolutely a chicken and egg. And that's why I think focusing on quick wins is really yeah. important, right? Like that's why to me, you, like what's the aha moment or the surprise is it works so quickly, our software, because you can invest time this month and recoup that time this month. Totally. Or many other software processes can't say the same thing. <laughs> Um, and I think over time it, it shifts, right? Like you can make bookkeeping a profit center. Like our accounting firm, Phenophimal, that we you know ran for eight plus years and still operate is you know a huge asset for us, right? The margins on our accounting and bookkeeping business are fantastic despite having no tax work, no advisory work. Bookkeeping doesn't have to just be a loss leader. And as you kind of improve the margins on your bookkeeping, maybe you hire some more senior resources who are doing more review since the software is doing the data entry, right? And it kind of changes the DNA of your firm over time. But, you know, I don't think people should write off bookkeeping as this kind of loss leader that I'm just using to get advisor work. You can make both profitable totally. and better bookkeeping is only going to make you a better advisor. Yeah. And I would argue that, that if, if I owned a bookkeeping practice, I would go about automating my systems you know, first, rather than hiring outsource bookkeepers to, to be on my team to do the, the manual work that could be automated. I mean, it just makes more sense. Your margins will be much higher and then your time will be freed up to focus on other things. Or if you just wanted to continue bookkeeping, you take, just take on more bookkeeping clients. You just have a, a, a very, very clean, you know, automated bookkeeping practice. I mean, the sky's the limit. But we've got to leverage technology. Myself, Adam. Yep. <laughs> Well, I know we're uh, we're almost out of time. Tom and Jesse, where can listeners find you guys? Yeah, you can find us at finoptimal.com. Uh, if you're interested in our software products specifically, finoptimal.app, A-P-P. Um, you can also find us on LinkedIn. Tom Zahetner, Jesse Rubenfeld, look us up. We're on there pretty regularly. Perfect. We'll put those three things in the show notes. Tom and Jesse, thank you so much for being on the show today. We'll